Fortnite has given people opportunity to change their lives. Champion Boga! But with that amount of opportunity comes scandals. Today I will be going through the dark side of competitive Fortnite. On June 12th, 2018, Epic Games unveiled the Fortnite World Cup, a groundbreaking $30 million tournament inviting players worldwide to qualify for the finals at New York's Arthur Rashe Stadium. It promised the largest prize pool in Fortnite history, offering everyone a shot at the major cash prize. To qualify for it, you had to go through 10 weeks of open qualifiers where only the best 100 players in solos and duos would qualify and compete on the main stage. With all the huge opportunity came two pro players, Ziff and Ronaldo. These two players wanted to qualify so bad for World Cup that they took it way too far. While playing the qualifiers, they had their friends land on them and feed them points to help them qualify. Pickaxes, the chest for some reason, right? Finally picks up the purple pump. He's dead. Now this chesty guy lands out of nowhere. Right. I don't know why he landed. Grabs the SMG. Doesn't grab the math. Doesn't go for the purple pump. Doesn't go for anything. Running into a wall. And then he shows us his best impression of your grandpa playing Fortnite. And starts, you know, shooting. For some reason, just shooting the brick wall. Never shooting over the brick wall. It's... Okay. And it wasn't just Ziff, it was also Ronaldo, his duo teammate. This is Rise Ronaldo, right? This is Rise Ronaldo, Ziff's teammate. Runs in, starts teabagging, gets shot by Ronaldo. This caused a public outrage with Clicks making a statement about it. Yo, what's up boys? Um, it's Clicks here. Today we're gonna be going over um a player that was accused of teaming, and we have so much proof here. And it just really upsets me that someone is doing this in the Fortnite community. And six days later, on May 3rd, 2019, Fortnite released a competitive blog post banning Ziff and Ronaldo for two weeks, stating, Based on an internal investigation, we have concluded that a group of players attempted to undermine the Week 3 Fortnite World Cup online competition on April 28 by colluding across several matches. Now, that was a step in the right direction, but only a two-week ban in week three of World Cup means they have five more weeks to go ahead and qualify for the World Cup finals. But they wouldn't qualify, would they? Well, this is where the story gets a little more spicy. June 2nd, 2019, which was week 8 of World Cup, Ziff and Ronaldo would go on to get 3rd and qualify to the LAN, guaranteeing themselves $50,000 each. This wasn't received well by the community, as everyone knew they were cheaters. Former Fortnite pro and now Valorant star Benji Fishy said, Whether or not Ziff and Ronaldo cheated again, I still really hate how they are still even able to play in these. Honestly think they should have just given one chance. Imagine they go on to New York City and win. People would be pissed. And there was even more reactions to them qualifying, but Ziff responded by saying, Y'all are reaching, see y'all in New York City. July 28th, 2019 came around and they were allowed to compete in the Fortnite World Cup Finals. Hilariously though, they would go on to get booed when they were on the screen and people would cheer when they would now get eliminated. Let's go take a look. Oh, and Ziff is out of here! If I'm going to be honest, they deserve this. They cheated and still qualified, stealing $100,000 from another team. What is your opinion on the situation? Let me know in the comment section down below. Anyway, this was one of Fortnite's biggest scandals in its history, but this next story will show one of the darkest sides of Fortnite competitive that you probably don't know about. December 3rd, 2023, Fortnite released the new chapter after the success of the OG season. With Fortnite OG being over, everyone is excited for the FNCS to return. Iomzo and Ryze were one of the favorites to win it all. They placed very consistently throughout the season, placing high in many duo cash cups, and when it came to the FNCS qualifiers, they placed 11th and 17th to qualify for the upper bracket. In the upper bracket, they got third qualifying to the grand finals. Iomzo and Ryze have never won an FNCS, and and this was their best chance to date to finally get a hold of the FNCS pickaxe. February 24th, 2023 was the FNCS Grand Finals and they would play out of their minds in day number one. They would finish on top of the leaderboard only two points ahead of the global champions Cooper and Miro. In the day two of Grand Finals, points were doubled, meaning one bad game and you would lose your top spot. 
so they have to keep playing good. And well, they did, getting top three in their first game and starting to run away with FNCS. But something would go terribly wrong. Game three, Iyamzo couldn't queue up for the game due to internet issues. They didn't think anything of it and just thought it was unlucky. One missed game is fine, but then the next game, the same problem would happen. Then Iyamzo would tweet out a series of tweets with one of them saying, I'm genuinely crying, man. Why me and what did I do? Some unknown person had been hitting Iyamzo's internet offline to intentionally grief his FNCS win. There was a lot of rumors as to who did it, but for the sake of not spreading misinformation, I'm going to say it was an unknown person. After constant internet issues, they would go on to play the last two games, but at that point, all hope was lost. As they dropped from 1st to 8th, missing out on their first FNCS win and $140,000. This duo would go on to split, meaning one of the best duos in NA history would go on to never win in FNCS. This next duo won in FNCS, but got scammed out of $200,000 for something out of their control. In Chapter 4 Season 3's FNCS, there was a stacked European Grand Finals with names like Tayson and Mustache. Malibu and Thomas, Seti and Kami, and many more. Everyone expected these teams to dominate, but there was an unexpected rise from two Russian players, Swizzy and Putrik. Now for some context, Russia has ongoing sanctions, meaning that as a Russian player, you cannot receive prize winnings. So Swizzy and Putrik moved to Belarus so they can continue to play Fortnite competitively and receive prize winnings. They would go on to play tournaments and receive every single prize winning, and everything seemed fine. Fast forward to August 13th, 2023, and they would go on to shock the world. The Russian duo would go on a tear and win both days of Grand Finals, beating out second place by 150 points. That would make Swizzy a two-time FNCS winner on different regions, Asia and Europe, and Putrik would get his first FNCS title. But not only that, they also qualified for the Global LAN in Copenhagen for a chance at $3 million. Well, that would be the case until they were disqualified from FNCS and Globals because they were still considered Russian residents. Everyone was confused because Malabuka, who is also a Russian player, moved to Serbia and has not been disqualified from any tournament. But Malabuka would take to Twitter and explain that Swizzy and Putrik didn't go through the process correctly and therefore they were rightly disqualified. They would lose out on $200,000 and a chance at the $3 million Global LAN event in Copenhagen. On a good note though, they both have been cleared and Swizzy won Chapter 5 Season 2's FNCS with his new duo Vanyak and will be competing in the Global LAN in Fort Worth, Texas, so good luck to them this year. As for Putrik, he didn't have the same success, but is still playing today. Now, many players have been disqualified and banned from tournaments, but this next story will shock you as you won't believe who got banned. In Chapter 4 Season 2, Clicks and Scented were one of the duos to look out for, Scented being an accomplished IGL and and Clicks being one of the best fraggers in the region, everyone knew they were going to go crazy in FNCS. But something didn't go as planned. During a solo Victory Cup Finals, Clicks was getting non-stop stream snipe. The player stream sniping him was non-stop shooting Clicks and trying to grief him. Clicks got heated in the moment and he did this. Right here, I literally said, um, if you're in the stream, splash me, okay? Splash me. This was Clicks trying to show Epic Games that he is getting stream sniped so they could ban the kid, but he made one mistake. But I honestly shouldn't have took it that far for me to pick up the loot, if you want me to be honest. Like, I, I completely get that. And I did break the rules right there. But I do feel like two weeks is a little bit too harsh. After picking up this loot, Clicks went on to dominate the lobby and win the game. Nobody thought anything of it as Clicks gets stream sniped all the time until April 24th, 2023, he was hit with a 14 day ban. To make matters worse, Fortnite had just changed the rules to if you get a 14 day ban, you cannot play the FNCS in that season and the FNCS after that one. Meaning this would grieve Scented's FNCS as it left him duelist and Clicks was unable to compete in the next two FNCSs. The community did not think this was fair as Clicks brings so much viewership to Fortnite and the hashtag free clicks went trending. This story doesn't really have a good ending as Scented didn't end up qualifying for grand finals this season and Clicks did not get unbanned. The community could not believe that Clicks actually got banned for something so little, but that wasn't even the craziest story yet. Hackers in Fortnite are everywhere, from public matches to 
two ranked to open tournaments online and even the FNCS Global Championship in Copenhagen. But before we get to the LAN, let me introduce to you the team. Jace was a tier 1 OCE pro and Repulse was a tier 1 pro from all the way back in the earlier days of Fortnite competitive who quit after chapter 2. Now, this duo formed in chapter 4 season 3 to try and qualify for the FNCS Global LAN in Copenhagen and win major 3 entirely. This duo would go on to win major 3 FNCS and qualify to the Copenhagen LAN earning them at least $12,000 each. Now, everything seemed fine until people start to catch on to Repulse. How could someone who quit for years come back and win FNCS? Well, I regret to inform you guys, Repulse was not the person playing on his account. Forbes was. Forbes, like Repulse, also played and was good around the same time as him, being a tier 1 OCE pro during 2021 and popular on YouTube, but later got banned on his account and quit. Fast forward to him playing on Repulse's account, he wasn't just alting, he was also cheating. I'm talking about aimbot and ESP. The cheat he was playing on was so good that Epic Games did not ban him for 8 months and he developed a playstyle that was hard to tell if he was cheating or not. So now the problem is, Jace and Forbes qualified for the global FNCS LAN while cheating. But since Epic Games and the whole Fortnite community knew what Repulse looked like, how would they attend an in-person LAN event. Would Forbes show up, you may ask? Impossible, they would just get disqualified. So that meant the real Repulse was forced to travel all the way to Copenhagen to pretend like he was the one who actually played and won FNCS. They made it all the way to the global LAN and attended media day. But then on October 12th, 2023, just one day away from being able to play in the event, Jace and Repulse were disqualified and deported out of the country. Even though they got disqualified, that duo still got paid out their $20,000 for winning FNCS. CS Major 3 while cheating, which to this day is the most a cheater has earned and gotten away with in a single tournament. This wasn't the only scandal at the global FNCS LAN though. This event was filled with much more drama. The 2023 global FNCS in Copenhagen had not one, but two teams disqualified. The next person to get disqualified was one of Fortnite's most popular streamers, Bucky. But first, how did they get there? Bucky and Okus qualified for the Major 3 Grand Finals and in Major 3, there was 10 qualifying spots available to the best teams. So they needed to get top 10 in Major 3, but it did not go to Plan. After day one, Bucky and Okus sat at 44 points and were in what I like to call the trenches. But the tournament was not over as they had six more games to play. In day number two, they shocked the world. Let's fucking go! What the fuck? Let's fucking go! That's what I'm fucking talking about, baby! They would go on to win day number two of grand finals and just getting enough points to qualify for the global FNCS LAN in Copenhagen. This was one of the biggest comebacks in Fortnite history and going into Copenhagen, they were hoping to shock the world again and place high. But as you can imagine, that did not go to plan. At Copenhagen, Bucky would do something that would get him kicked out and deported from the country. No one knows the real reason as to why he got kicked out, but I'm sure he broke some rules and regrets it. Some of the rumors I've heard are regarding alcohol use, which was against Epic's terms of service. This meant Okus was left as a solo and he needed to solo duel the most stacked lobby in Fortnite history. And as we know, that just didn't end well. And this wasn't the only time Bucky has gotten kicked out from an event. On May 31st, 2024, there was the DreamHack ESL tournament where Bucky was streaming and representing Agent. Bucky, being Bucky, was having a great stream and was content farming and did this. Oh my god. Wow. Dude, I set the alarm off, dude. After that, the security kicked him out. I've got my stuff with yeah. Yeah, we had, we had a bunch of shit. I, I mean, this is just crazy. Yeah, yeah. I got All right, guys. At least I'm the two-time at something, bro. Hey, my At least I'm the two-time at something. He later went to Twitter to apologize for what he did by saying, I'd like to apologize for what I did today. I went too far and broke the rules. Disappointed in myself, I should know better. As I get older, I keep going backwards, need to take a step back and really look at my actions. Appreciate everyone stopping by for the streams and sorry to let people down again. Personally, I think it was a bit harsh to kick him out as he was having a really good stream and was promoting the event as there wasn't really much coverage on it. And they probably should have just left him with a warning in my opinion. Anyway, this was the dark side of Fortnite competitive that you probably didn't know about and I'll tell you more interesting stories if you just hit the subscribe button and I'll see y'all in the next one.